Okay, so I just try to talk about this all the time, and I know I don't do a great job in some of my videos, because I'm just not a professional YouTuber, and I don't make money off of it. I don't make money off my website. I think my whole intent is just to, um, really just educational, just to teach people things that have, um, fascinated me. And so if you're ever going to try to understand is, you know, Joseph Smith and plural marriage and the year 1842, like what happened? Like there's a mass number of eternity only ceilings. I'm going to kind of explain why, why I really think that happened. Um, and so what, what sort of got to me, I didn't research anything about plural marriage and that's really what led to read about Joseph Smith, the things that had happened. I mean, if you read this one article, less than 20 plural marriage, you know, I'll kind of, I can give a link to this. Um, it's really explains a lot. If you go online, like we, we don't hide these things. You know, I've heard some people say, Oh, the church just barely admitted Joseph Smith lived plural marriage in 2015. I, I heard about it in the nineties when I was in high school. So yeah, we talked about it and how the ages were just very young and very old. And so when I'm just going to kind of read some of this to you for people, especially people that are not members and people that are members of the church, it's just confusing. It's like, what is going on? You know? So during the era in which plural marriage was practiced, there was a difference between ceilings for etern time and eternity and ceilings for eternity only. Ceilings for time and eternity included commitments and relationships during this life generally including the possibility of sexual relations. So if you're time in eternity, you're married and you can have sex. Eternity only ceiling indicated relationships in the next life alone. Um, and some of the women who were sealed to Joseph Smith later testified that their marriage is for time and eternity, while others indicated that it was for eternity alone. And so they do state here that Helen Mark Kimball, she was, you know, at a very young age, and then they sort of defend, um, you know, she was almost 15. That, that wasn't abnormal back then, really. To be 14, almost 15, and to get married. Um, and frankly, when I heard about her, I remember when I was 14, 15, I liked older guys. And I just, I, you know, I thought I was like an adult. And in a way, I do sort of think there is, in some women, quite a maturity, especially back then. Um, but... I'm not for it. You're still physically growing and emotionally growing. And it turns out that Brigham Young said Joseph Smith wasn't for timing any twenty ceilings with women younger than 18. And so a lot of women were sealed for eternity only when they were younger. And then time sealing later on is what a lot of people have said. We talk about this so much, especially since 2015. There's just so many stuff. So Helen Mark Kimball spoke of her relationship to Joseph for being for eternity alone, suggesting relationship did not involve sexual relations. Um, and further example is just, she didn't move into his house. Like, you know, the, all the women in the temple lot case, you, you only have really just three women that talked about what physically happened because a lawyer asked them and that was all that they could get. You know, Helmar Kimball could have come, and the whole point was to prove that he was married, married, not just these eternity only, you know. And then, and, and this also talks about just how ceilings, in a lot of situations, they were just trying to seal everyone together. Like, I'm a father would be sealed to their daughter, just so he's always his fa her father. You're not married, though. If you think that you are, you're an idiot. Those people. You know, I just, and there are idiots that are members of the church. It does happen, you know, but it's just, you want to always have this connection with your family. So you're never separated. You're, you're together forever, you know? And so why there's so many numbers of eternity only ceilings. And then you just sort of start to understand some of these things, um, and so this is a couple of days ago, it was just, I'm realizing, oh, I just, 
it was a big day when I got my picture in the mail that I bought online that I was convinced matched the death mask. And then when I bought it, all of a sudden I'm researching it every rich way for the last three years. And it's been uplifting to me. But this all really started because I was hearing so many people saying Joseph Smith was like a sexual predator and all this stuff. And um, I wanted to see his face. You know, I, I've i been through stuff and, um, you know, I've I've been through abuse and I'm definitely not for it and uh, everything I've heard in general conference the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints does not support it they should go to jail um they should be excommunicated or disciplined on the le- whatever the level of abuse it is so um you know I mean you might find a bishop here or there that's apathetic and it happens but it might situation has been rare so it really opened my eyes, you know, seeing that picture that I own, and I really believe it's him, I do see someone that's kind, and it's like, well, what is a predator? And I talked about this before, but I'm just gonna do it again, because all my other videos are bad, and hopefully this one's good, and I'll keep it up hopefully longer, I don't know, I'm not making money off of YouTube anyway, so I guess I don't have a ton of motivation to, like, keep these up forever, just because people are weird to me sometimes, so, um, but this guy, Chauncey Higby, um, I've talked about before, I found his picture. I mean, this is just huge, just being able to see their face and then hearing the stories of the women. And so someone on Instagram was saying that Church Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints never gave women a voice. So these women right here were given a voice. And they were, they were raped by this guy, Chauncey Higby. I would call it sexual assault. When you read their whole story... And it was published. You know, Joseph Smith and Emma went to, I mean, women, like this one woman, Sarah Miller, said, oh, well, you were at the choir and you spoke, so I decided to come forward and say, oh, someone that, you know, because they said, we don't live spiritually free. And so most members of the church don't know what that is. Most people I talk to at church, I try to explain what really happened, and they're just, a lot of people are afraid to research all this, and they're afraid they're going to lose their testimony and stuff, and I was one of them until I had a really good feeling that I should just do it. And it did jar me in the beginning, you know, but when I read more and more and more, you know, then I'm like, got a perspective on it. And, um, cause you're going to see memes everywhere about this stuff. Anyway, Chauncey Higby, Margaret Nyman and Matilda Nyman were very young girls. Um, Chauncey Higby was on the Navi Legion and he was BFFs. Like literally he's the best friend of JC Bennett. Like he's, his name in J.C. Bennett's book about um, the history of the saints or something, something really deceiving like that is the name of his book. But I, I read J.C. Bennett's book, and he does say that the whole Relief Society were prostitutes. Not that they were living plural marriage, they were living spiritual wifery, which was prostitution. And what does it turn out to be when you read the High Council Minutes of J.C. Bennett and Chauncey Higby? They were treating women like prostitutes. And Joseph Smith's letters to Emma is describing it that way. You know, that's why it's so interesting to have the Joseph Smith papers. So anyway, Margaret Nyman, she's just saying he just wouldn't stop. He's just so aggressive until he got what he wanted. Same with Matilda. They were young girls walking to school and brought into a house where and they say um, Mrs. Fuller. So Catherine Warren, she was also, her last name was Fuller. That's who they're talking about. And J.C. Bennett were there telling him teaching JC John C. Higby how to um get what he wanted from the girl. So it's really sick and messed up. And then Sarah Miller was a widow and so was Catherine Warren. They were very vulnerable women and so and also women, you know, the husband had husbands that were gone for the church. You know, um each of them, he's just very, very aggressive. And so they were given a voice. So these statements were from, from 1842. This was published in the Nauvoo Neighbor in June 1842. And like, I think two weeks later, Chauncey Higby and William Law, that became his new BFF. It was J.C. Bennett that became William Law because William Law was executed for the same things J.C. Bennett was, which was just classed as adultery, but not polar marriage. And it wasn't that they were trying to live plural marriage and they weren't allowed to. 
they weren't trying to live plural marriage. They were living spiritual wifery, which got you excommunicated because that was, con- was considered adultery because there was no commitment. And it was, more, you know, a woman being with more than one guy. They just didn't value them. And the FLDS church, like Warren Jeffs, and a lot of those leaders that became super abusive shared women. They didn't just live plural marriage where there was one man and committed to these women that there's more value to the women that way than this spiritual wifery where they they don't care if they die from an abortion, which you did back then. It was so dangerous. They were forcing. It just, it's very horrific hearing how these women were forced. And like these women are saying, if you read the whole thing, that he's saying, oh, Dr. Bennett will get rid of the baby. And then you've got one woman talking about his tool. It's just so dangerous back then. Just so horrifying. And they knew women died from that. And they didn't care because they just wanted to get what they wanted with no consequences. Um, And then, so Joseph Smith, I've always heard that he did live plural marriage. And, um, And as we pointed out before, there were a lot of eternity only ceilings. Um, But the temple lot case were women that were time and eternity. And you only got three women that really got into detail. They tried to get women that would say, yes, we really had a marriage union, you know. And so what put a lot of perspective for me, you know. So like Lucy Walker's story is interesting, but I was really impressed with Emily Partridge's because you're reading it and you see at this point on page 357, they've realized this girl story is really interesting because she's lived with him as a nanny, like help, helping Emma with the kids for years, since 1841. She hasn't married him for two years. And so all these quotes, they're really trying to see, well, was he ever aggressive? Was he really trying to get what he wanted? You know, was he... And they do ask her on other pages, Emily, well, did you do do anything? Did you have sexual intercourse before? Like, they would say that word. Because it's in a court of law, and they're just really wanting to know by 1890. I think my actually it was 1891. But anyway, um, plural marriage was over in 1890. I'm going to put that link of plural marriage. So in the Church of Christ Latter-day Saints, it was discouraged in 1890. You were excommunicated maybe 15 years later. It took a few years before they made it a severe punishment. You know, but they're saying we're ending this. Ending takes time. But anyway, it's at this point, Emily Partridge is living in the church where her first two husbands are dead. And plural marriage has ended. And... So what motivation does she have to lie, you know, but they're just really asking, you know, he proposes to her and then she just looks scared. He hasn't proposed yet. He literally just is going to hand her a paper and he's starting to explain what's in the paper and she gets scared and he's like, are you scared? And she's like, yes. Do you want me to stop stop talking? Says Joseph. And she's like, yes, stop talking. Please just stop. I don't want to hear this. I'm scared. I'm a little bit scared. He walks away and doesn't talk about it. And she's like, a year later, a year later, she walks up to him and says, like, I want to know what what you're going to say. And he proposes to her and get married, like, right there in 1843. Totally different from Chauncey Higby, who actually is a sexual predator, who was just, just wanted what he wanted, when he wanted it, right away. Never proposed, never went through courting. Joseph is going through this very meticulous, with every single case... With, like, Lucy going to the older brother because he's the oldest male that's there and asking his permission and asking her permission. And they were a little bit closer, so her story's a little bit different. They were both very blunt, so it was just different. But, um, but Emily Partridge, it's just, they're just like, well, what, did anything physically happen before you were married? You know, and so it's just funny as you're reading on, like, the first and second. So so two times, he, he almost proposed the first time. It's like a year later was the second time. She's lived in his house, though same house what was his manner and she's like well I don't know what you want me to say he says Emily it's so funny did 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 he have his arm around you no sir did he have his arm around you no sir he did not put his arm around you no sir nothing of the kind he just said what he had to say and did not touch me for he was getting ready to go somewhere was he in the habit of putting his arm around you they're just really wondering if he was you know touchy-filly or she's like no sir 
never he was a gentleman and so they just just like he was he would not indulge in liberties like that and they were like have you seen anything unbecoming in him she's like never in my life you know and they were alone together but she's like but but didn't even touch her hand she's like no like he wouldn't even touch her hand that's how non-aggressive he was and so then it's not so surprising that he could already live in a house with these girls he's already wanting to marry lucy walker too Emily, Melissa Lott moved in. And so out of the Temple Lott case, two of these girls already lived there, got married, and then, but it was always after they were married, things physically happened. And, um, but Melissa Lott was quite a bit older when she moved in, and it sounds like it, that's the only secondhand account that Joseph ever said anything happened with one of his wives, was with Melissa Lott, so... And she was the one that said she really got along with her because Emily Partridge was kicked out by Emma. Lucy Walker was like best friends with his, you know, his children. You know, she just, she was the youngest. And so, um, but she said that she was just too afraid. You know, why, why didn't they have children? She said we were too afraid with everything going on. And then in the memoirs of Joseph Smith III, he's just interrogating all these women, and, and it's just sort of the same thing, that Joseph cared about them and didn't want them to look like an unwed mother. Because to the world, they weren't married. These were unmarried girls. To everyone else in Nauvoo, besides him and maybe one of his apostles that was there, they weren't married. But they were, you know. And so the interesting thing, again, about Emily Partridge, if you study her, well, like, well, you know, people think that he was just lying to Emma because she's there for the second marriage and and Emily didn't really know you know but they all said Emma knew they asked them it's interesting read the whole thing they all say Emma knew Emma knew the unique thing about her second so she's proposed to twice but her second marriage like she's married and Emma's not there and the second time Emma's there but it all makes sense when you realize there's this judge there like she's Emma's making this legal in his name a judge seals marries for time attorney Emily Partridge to Joseph Smith because someone online was trying to tell me well they weren't really married like they're spiritual wives like JC Bennett said they're just like his prostitutes and it's just spiritual and they weren't really married and it was just passing women around you know which Baptists believe that because they believe JC Bennett like who do you believe But no, there, Judge Adams, like he was an actual judge, was there. I think Emma was like anticipating, and she felt so close to Emily, which is, it's, and it's sad. And I think that's why Emily was so mad because then all of a sudden she rejects them and wants them out of the house. Um, And it's all just sad. But for some reason, Melissa Lott didn't bother her as much. And and then the Lawrence sisters, you just have no, um, no story. There's just no story because they didn't say anything. One girl died and the other one um, denied it in front of other people to Helen Mark Kimball. She said, no, I wasn't like married to your dad or Joseph Smith. She's like, I wasn't married to any of them and just ran off. And so, yeah, in her mind, maybe it was like an eternity only sealing with the Lawrence sisters or two other, two other girls. So it's like five girls that lived in the house at once. With him, and that's what most people said, like, oh, he's, like, five wives. So, um, the younger girls, it just sounds like it was, and then to really understand this more, what you can do is just go to, like, family search and study, you want to look at his apostles, because, I mean, a lot of other people lived it, and people lived it wrong, and were abusive in Utah, and today, and back then, probably, But his apostles were the ones that were really, how did Joseph Smith teach it? How was it different? How is it different? Because FLDS Church, they live spiritual wifery and plural marriage. As of recently, I think in the beginning, they were just living plural marriage. But Warren Jeffs forced his wife to be with other men. And that's when it becomes spiritual wifery. But the whole word forced uh, makes it's... That's where you start understanding the abuse side of it and just that um, most men shouldn't live it. And Joseph Smith said that too, that most men should not be living this. Um, but it was just to bring forth. Yeah, but if you look at Family Search, you'll see I've studied some of the apostles and like Brigham Young, for example, if we just went there and if I pulled up his page, you would see it really is 16 women that he had children with. 
Um, and then at one point, Brigham Young did have a conference meeting where he said a lot of people are hating plural marriage. They're not liking it. And so on such and such date, we're going to make it super easy. Women, if you hate this situation, you can just leave. I'll just let you all leave. And he's like, <laughs> and he admits like later, he just hoped all of his wives left. Even his own wives. He's like, you can just leave. And so a lot of, there were divorces with Brigham Young and things like that. And I haven't studied all the details, but it's only seven women that Brigham Young had more than one child with. And I kind of wonder if it really was like seven women that really stuck with it. So the numbers go down a lot. Kind of like with Joseph Smith, you have mass numbers, eternity only, but then it goes down to like five that lived in his house. Maybe six if you include Eliza or Snow, but at, at once... It was like five, you know, and other women were kind of around and there were, there were, there were more eternity only ceilings besides that, you know, the doctrine and covenant says, oh, it could be 10, but, um, it probably was something like that. I just, other people have done more research than me, but, uh, temple lot case is kind of it. So, but yeah, if you look at family search, you're just seeing, These apostles, like, did any of these women get pregnant younger than 18? And I haven't found one. I did find, you know, with when I was researching one apostle and just found, oh, she was like, yeah, like 16 when they, the marriage event happened, but she didn't have children until she was 20. And so that kind of goes along with some, the quote of Brigham Young saying, you know, you can get sealed for eternity only. It's, it's, it, I mean, you are kind of considered husband and wife, but you're not married till it's eternity, until it's time and time sealing. And so that usually didn't happen until they were 18 or their 18th year of life. So um, these younger women, it really is, they really have to twist the facts. Well, they really just lie. Like people lie and say that Lucy Walker is 15 when she married Joseph Smith. She was actually 17 which she was in her 18th year of life. So she was the youngest one that ever said anything physically happened. Anyway, um, and just to kind of conclude, you know, people keep calling me a pedophile, him, Joseph Smith, a pedophile, and just reading about his son, Joseph Smith third. I think it's like on page 10. Of, I, I like I almost have it memorized now, where he um, talks about, he goes through all the apostles and his experience with all of them. And one of them just made him really uncomfortable and I don't know what all he went through I kind of wonder you know because in Missouri I mean he was attacked by a Missouri guard and a lot of those guards were just like so many members of the church were well they were shot and killed and um whipped until their you know their insides came out according to Hiram Smith and a lot of women were raped and um we don't know what else happened to children. They were saying things were happening. They were killing and hurting children, too. But and, and whatever. But you know that some guard was, you know, shoved him away from his father because he's screaming. His dad's getting taken away, and they had a knife. Like um, Lucy Maximus saw that happen and just really shoved him away with his sword. Joseph Smith's son. You know, it just he went through a lot of trauma as a little boy and his dad died when he was like almost 12 not quite 12 okay so around so under 12 at some point one of the apostles made him so uncomfortable by putting his hand on his head and he throws his hand off it just made him feel icky and he's telling his dad his dad's like why are you so rude to this guy but he asks how did you feel? Like he's, again, he's like very empathetic and wondering as his son is saying, well, it made me feel uncomfortable. Like, I want to know more. Like he's listening to his son and then his son makes a sour face. Well, it made me feel, and he makes a sour face. And then he's like, said his dad laughed, but he said that apostle never touched him again. You know, like it really, he took his sons very seriously. Anything made him uncomfortable. It sounds like he cared. And with all these women, like just, me handing you a piece of paper scares you so much. Okay, I'm going to walk away and not talk to you about it for a year. That sounds more like him. And so I think a lot of these women just hated plural marriage and he didn't want um, them to look like an unwed mother. He wanted to wait until they were in Utah and he even said that to Lucy Walker. When we're, when we're in Utah, I can publicly acknowledge that you're my wife. And so 
Gracia Jones said, not a lot happened. And whatever that means, you know, they obviously weren't going to get into details back then. And it's not really our business to make up stories, but people do. They'd fill in the holes of what they think happened. But, you know, if Luce, you know, if Helen Mark Kimball said, it wasn't a romantic relationship and has no story of him physically coming on to her. And neither does Emily Partridge before they were married for a time in eternity. So it just, it's a different story when you read everything and everything they say. Anyway, um, hopefully this is better than some of my other videos and I might keep it up a little bit longer. I don't know. I just hope it helps someone to understand just that people always bring it up and always bring it up and it's, just read it all. Anyway, have a good day.